The world was a strange place a decade ago. Our phones were dumb, Guitar Hero was popular, and Housewives were desperate. And in the very early days of YouTube, a comedic rap from Saturday Night Live named Lazy Sunday became one of the first viral videos on YouTube. With their new film Popstar coming out soon, I thought now is the perfect time to take a look at the origins and development of this comedic trio. Today on TV Junkie, the history of the Lonely Island. My name's Akiva, the brains of the group. If you have a problem, I can solve it for you. Andy here, and I love a good sandwich. So if you have a sandwich, come roll with me. My name is Jorma, mother the sensitive one. Break your mother face with the butt of my gun. The year, early 1990s. The place, somewhere in Berkeley, California. High school students Akiva Schaefer and Norma Tacconi, later joined by student Andy Sandberg, united over a mutual love of entertaining each other and also skateboarding, apparently. According to Yorma, their grouping was the result of just compiling friends into this big group of stupid dudes. The dudes would later become one of the many names this comedic trio called themselves. Each of the dudes went their own way for college, with Tacconi and Schaefer staying in California while Sandberg studied in New York. Following graduation, the three reunited in LA, committed to making films together, working day jobs to pay the rent. They named their apartment, which also doubled as their film studio, The Lonely Island, which the group quickly adapted as their moniker. In September of 2001, under the name of Incredibad, the trio released their first rap parody song, Kablamo. <laughs> Two months later, the group created a television pilot called The Lonely Island, a mix of sketches linked by the dudes using teeth whitening products. Fellas, get ready for teeth whitening day! <laughs> The first Lonely Island pilot resulted in the trio getting agents, and in early 2003 they produced a second episode of their Lonely Island television concept, this time for Comedy Central in particular. Oh my god. Are you okay? It's not looking so good, fellas. Doc says I may never walk again. No. Uh, actually, I didn't say that. He's fine. He's just a broken pinky. He insisted on the wheelchair. But he's still got a chance. Right, Doc? Of course. Like I said, he'll be fine. <gasps> Although the network purchased the rights to the project, the show did not move forward. Still, it was another stepping stone for the comedic trio. The Lonely Island would find their next success with the Super Midnight Movie Club, later renamed Channel 101, a project from comedy veterans Dan Harmon and Rob Schrab. In March of 03, they created the Nintendo Cartoon Hour for Channel 101. Oh, Steve, you have got moves. Steve? I... Carl. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Yeah, great to see you. Okay. Well, it was good talking uh, to you. You take oh. that! Oh. Their next creation was Ignition TV Buzz Countdown, a fake pop culture news program featuring a surprising amount of pornography. The countdown lasted two episodes on Channel 101 and was followed by the Lonely Island's biggest success at the time, The Boo, a parody of The O.C. While working for Channel 101, the group caught the eye of Fox executives who brought the troupe in to create another television pilot. The result this time was Awesome Town, a mix of pre-recorded sketches, live stage bits, and Jack Black. Prepare to get your nuts smashed by Awesome Town! Town. Since the beginning of time, Mankind has searched for sanctuary from poverty, sickness, and war. Just recently, three young men found it. Welcome to Awesome Town! Come along with us! Come along to Awesome Town! Come along with us! And wipe away your frown! I'm sure the result was far weirder than what Fox was expecting and the project went nowhere, but it allowed the Lonely Island to refine their craft even further. Now a tiny blip on the map of Hollywood, The Lonely Island was hired by MTV to write for their 2005 movie awards. The host of the awards that year was Saturday Night Live star Jimmy Fallon. One thing led to another and Andy Sandberg was hired as an SNL performer with Schaefer and Tacone following as writers. For the first few months, The Lonely Island struggled to write a sketch that would make it to air so they decided to fall back on their comedy rap video style. The trio teamed up with SNL's Chris Parnell to produce a rap song and video from scratch in just five days. It was only minutes before the show's start on December 17, 2005 that the group was informed that their music video, Lazy Sunday, would air that evening. 
Lazy Sunday is credited as being one of YouTube's first viral successes. It spread like wildfire in the internet's biggest websites. The Lonely Island was given more autonomy at SNL and were quickly given their own division, SNL Digital Shorts. In early 2006, the group had created a second hit, Natalie's Rap, featuring Natalie Portman. In the summer of 2006, between seasons of SNL, The Lonely Island was given an opportunity to create Hot Rod, a comedy film initially intended for Will Ferrell. SNL head honcho and Lorne Michaels convinced Paramount to give the project over to Sandberg and crew. Schaefer directed the film, with all three members having rewritten the script originally created by South Park's Pam Brady. Several pals from SNL made appearances in the film, which features The Lonely Island Island's absurdist style of humor. It was a commercial failure and received mixed reviews. Personally, I love Hot Rod. There's no doubt in my mind it's a very stupid film, but it embraces its stupidity and wears it like a badge of honor. It's so eager to try these new experimental comedic bits that no other movie would try to do because they're just so stupid, but this movie can because it's proudly stupid. Oh yeah, I suppose I should mention this guy. Meet Chester Tam, a friend of Sandberg from his college years who relocated from New York to LA with Sandberg and worked with the Lonely Island in their early days. In fact, you can see him in many of their early sketches. Anyways, the Lonely Island success continued to grow in the following years. In late 06, they released Dick in a Box with Justin Timberlake, which spread like wildfire online and won a Creative Arts Emmy. The group signed with Universal Records, and in the summer of 2008, again between SNL seasons, they produced their debut album, Incredibad. Several singles from the album were turned into SNL digital shorts, including Jizz in My Pants and I'm on a Boat, both of which went viral online and certified platinum on the charts. I'm on a Boat also received a Grammy nomination. Individually, the members of The Lonely Island were becoming successful with their own endeavors. Sandberg started appearing in every comedy movie on the face of the earth, Tacconi, co-starred in the 2009 failure Land of the Lost, and directed the MacGruber film, which, like Hot Rod, I think is very underappreciated. In 2012, Schaefer directed the Ben Stiller comedy, The Watch. Now established in the pop culture spectrum, The Lonely Island released their second album, Turtleneck and Chain, in May of 2011. It topped the comedy album charts and was nominated for a Best Comedy Album Grammy. With all three members of The Lonely Island becoming busy, it was time for them to leave SNL. Both Tacconi and Schaefer left temporarily in 2010 to work on other projects, and they joined Sandberg and leaving SNL altogether in May of 2012. In 2013, The Lonely Island released The Whack Album. Their first music video for that album, YOLO, was released on SNL, while further music videos were released by The Lonely Island themselves. Initially, the group wanted to mount a live musical tour, but Sandberg's commitment to new sitcom Brooklyn Nine-Nine on Fox axed those plans. The next year, the trio co-wrote the song Everything is Awesome for the Lego Movie, and in the summer of 2014, Universal Pictures and producer Judd Apatow picked up the first official Lonely Island film. Popstar was filmed in the summer of 2015 with Sandberg starring, Takone and Schaefer directing the film and starring in supporting roles, and all three having written the script. Ever since I was born, I was dope. It's kind of The Lonely Island knew what they wanted to do since high school, they knew they wanted to work together, and they made it work despite being thousands of miles apart at times. Now, The Lonely Island's success really came from capturing lightning in a bottle. Their oddball, hyper, youth-skewed sense of humor, combined with the rise of digital media, gave The Lonely Island a great situation that they took advantage of. They were in the right place at the right time. I'm looking forward to seeing Popstar when it releases. I think it's going to be incredibly funny, although in a full twist of irony, it releases, I think, Friday, June 3rd, and I'm going on a cruise that weekend, so one might say... I'm on a boat! I'm on a boat! Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please, let's have a conversation in the comments below. Let's talk about Lonely Island or, or whatever. I just had a PBJ. It was really good. And subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Stay tuned for more here on TV Junkie. Who's ever whack? You said we whack. You take it back. Who's ever whack? You talking smack. You're gonna get smacked. You're saying that I'm whack, but it just ain't so. Someone's ever whack. Why would they say that? I don't think we're whack. Who's ever whack? Who said we're whack? I can't believe that.